We're here uh, at uh, Sheridan's and we continue our series of segments uh, with the Here Bashir. So hi here and thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. And so today we're going to talk about the potential expectations. Well, the series is about artists and brands. So we're going to talk about the potential expectations uh, uh, from uh, 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 artists and brand deals. Uh, so. Uh, let's start with the music only deals, for example, because uh, that's uh, that's an interesting entry point. So, we often hear about uh, high figures uh, when we talk about uh, associations uh, for music uh, between a, an artist and a brand, but uh, sometimes those figures are inflated. You know, there's a lot of uh, conflicting information as to uh, what artists can expect on the front. So, uh, how do you measure those expectations, also based on the artist's popularity? Um. Depends on. It comes back to the same thing. It depends on level of exposure, the type of song, yeah. the type of artist, and the type of brand. Um, you know, when we when we do what syncs here, we tend to categorize you know a particular artist's song right. bank into premium, uh, you know, and then second tier, third tier. So the premium songs will have a higher value to them. Yeah. Uh, I think probably it's true to say that. Um, Synchronization type deals have over time been reducing in value, probably, right. uh, because the budgets aren't the same as they are. Having said that, you know, with real stellar songs, uh, which might have been out of the, you know, might, might not be known for synchronizations, um, can still get some really big figures. Yeah, sure. And, uh, you know, a lot of the time we're talking about uh, TV and radio traditional campaigns, but there's also like uh, increasing, you were talking in the last segment about increasing budgets for digital. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, have those fees for digital uh, use of on digital adverts of music increased uh, uh, as much as the spend of the brands? Uh, so, you so if you, if, you, if you want to do a sync, for example, for only for digital uh, yeah. uh, use on, on online for a campaign, have those fees started to increase uh, of what artists can potentially get? Yes, they have. I mean, as I said in the last segment, the budgets for digital have increased because the, the spends in the, in the, within the brands themselves have changed. Yeah. Uh, they have, and also from a, a talent's perspective, the reach is larger digitally. Uh, uh, ultimately, if you're, if you're on a viral campaign, that's global instantly. And similarly, when those things aren't cleared, the damages are greater as well, yeah. because ultimately, our you know your argument is it's gone out straight away, it's gone viral, all these eyeballs have seen it, all these ears have listened to it, and so now you've got the exposure you wanted. Yeah. Um, the budgets are I would say they've increased, but they're still probably not at the same level as traditional media, just yeah. because of the you know the. Whilst the budgets have increased, the the budgets haven't increased that much. Yeah. Um, but they're definitely on on the on the upward. And uh, we're talking about artists and brands. So how uh, can an artist uh, choose between different opportunities uh, when it comes to uh, brand partnerships, uh, advertising versus a film or uh, a film sync, for example, or TV sync, mm. uh, without diluting their own brand? Uh, you know, what are your suggestions on that front? Yeah, I mean, if you had to, if you had to choose, and you had two deals which were the same, same value, and one was for a film, and one was for an advert, you'd always go for the film. Ultimately, your uh, exposure is different in a film. You know, you might be known, to, you know, for a particular scene. Take uh, Reservoir Dogs and Steelers Wheel stuck in the middle with you, and that then gets put into history almost. Um, versus being attached to a particular brand. I think a lot of artists seeing being attached to a particular brand as potentially a sellout type of uh, approach. And also, you know, the more associated you are with the brand, the, that's what people remember you for. And that can sometimes have a very damaging effect to your career. It can yeah. result in one hit wonders, as well as on the other side, people get launched off that. Um, so I guess, um, you know, artists and their management should think very strongly about how, uh, which, which direction they go in. Ultimately, you know, everyone likes the money, but sometimes holding back is, is the better approach because yeah. that keeps your premium value up. That's great. Well, thank you so much. And the next uh, segment, we're going to talk about uh, uh, artists as brands, them, uh, brands themselves and how they can uh, uh, increase uh, that value. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>